a well-regulated militia be necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Welcome to another edition of Bearing Arms, Cam and Company. My name is Cam Edwards. I'm glad you're with me on the program today. We're going to be spending some time with Mr. Jim Wallace, head of the Gun Owners Action League in Massachusetts, where a uh, monstrous gun bill has uh, just dropped. The Gun Owners Action League calling it the Lawful Citizens Imprisonment Act. Yeah, here are just a couple of the uh, lowlights. Mandatory registration of all firearms as well as magazines. Yeah, privately made firearms must be registered within seven days. uh, Plus a a mandatory reporting of any modifications or new parts to a firearm. I mean, this is crazy. Uh, Mandatory serialization of all ammunition magazines. Uh, Confusing language, they say, on new residents and serializing firearms, uh, as well as changes to the long gun permits, uh, gun bans for adults under the age of 21. Uh, Those are just a few of the provisions in this massive bill. And again, we're going to be talking about it uh, in just a moment with Jim Wallace of the Gun Owners Action League. This comes, by the way, you know, as lawmakers across the state have been holding what they call a listening tour uh, and apparently they weren't really listening to what gun owners had to say because there are all kinds of issues uh, inherent in this legislation. Again, we'll get to that in just a moment. Before we do, Biden's America, you know, is crushing us. You've got companies laying off tens of thousands of workers one after the other. Americans working two jobs just to get by. Inflation pushing hardworking families to the brink. Just look at the price of lunch meat the next time you go to the grocery store. And a digital dollar could be coming down the pipeline to completely destroy our way of life. The truth is, you need a plan. You know it, and I know it. And that's why you should call Gold Co. So you can diversify your savings and investments with gold and silver before things get worse. They're a six-time Inc. 5000 winner, 2022 Company of the Year, with thousands of five-star reviews. And they've helped people like you and me place over $1 billion in gold and silver. They're offering up to $10,000 in free silver while supplies last. And if you call them today, qualified callers will get a free Ronald Reagan half-ounce silver coin. So don't wait. Call Gold Co. at 855-412-3806 today. That's 855-412-3806. So let's get to our conversation with Jim Wallace of the Gun Owners Action League in Massachusetts to uh, get into the devilish details uh, again of this legislation that the uh, organization uh, says is uh, going to imprison lawful citizens merely for exercising their Second Amendment rights. Take a look and a listen. Jim, thank you so much, sir, for coming on the program today. Wish we were talking about better news uh, than this new bill just dropped in Massachusetts. This is awful stuff. Yeah, I, I I mean, it's <laughs> how do you even comment on that to somebody in the legislature? You know, it's it's just an outright frontal assault on civil rights in Massachusetts for the first time I think in Massachusetts history they're actually intentionally trying to eliminate a civil right, which to me is just uh, I mean, abhorrent is that a good word for it because it's I'm not sure how anybody would think that any community in the state would tolerate anything like this. So it's it's going to be an interesting next month or so. Yeah. Um, so so let, let's let's delve into the details here, which, by the way, lawmakers didn't make it easy uh, to figure out the devils in these details, because the no. way this bill was written, you and I were talking uh, not long after this bill got dropped yesterday, and it's. It, it, you know, look, legislatees is uh, it could be a foreign language uh, in and of itself. But this was written in such a way that, you know, replace section, uh, you know, 202 line 14 with the, the following. So you have a really difficult time understanding, OK, what exactly is changing here? If you are not fluent uh, in legislatees yeah. or maybe even if you are, I mean, can you talk about just the difficulties in trying to figure out what is in this bill? Yeah, well, one thing they did was they changed, I think, every section of gun law. So for 25 years, and, you know, things have been updated here and there, uh, but we at least knew where to look if we wanted to reference something. Didn't mean we understood it, and we've been doing this professionally for 25 years. So, Right. But at least we knew where to look. And now every section of law has been renumbered and changed. So you actually have to 
first find out what all those new sections actually mean before you can even try to determine when they're referencing a section, what does it do? And uh, it's to the point where, uh, you know, as you know, one of our most popular courses is called Mass Gun Law for Citizens. And our instructor, John Green, had a course last night. And I said, you know, maybe you just walk in and say, never mind, <laughs> and can go home, you know, because if this passes, everything we've taught for two decades is going to be moot. And the restrictions here are just going to be so astronomical. I mean, when it comes down to it, you, you can't leave your house with a gun, period. I mean, that's the way it's going to work. And because of the massive changes, that no one will be able to comply with this. If you have a gun license in mass, you're going to be a felon, period. There's, there's no way you can comply with this, even if you wanted to. OK, it's give me an example of give me, give me an example of what you're talking about. Um, you know, you say even if you have a license, it's basically be impossible for you to carry. Yeah. What's in this bill that that makes that uh, the, the, the case for gun owners going forward if this bill passes? Well, it's it's similar to what New York did. They basically made everything a protected place. You literally cannot be on anyone else's property with a gun loaded or unloaded unless you have their express permission. Period. Every government property, whether it's state, local, municipality, whatever you want to call it, off limits, cannot carry a gun anymore on any government property. Uh, even hunting, if you're hunting somebody else's property, they have to post that it's okay for you to possess a gun on their property. So it's it's all encompassing. It's not, you know, this isn't just the ugly guns anymore. This is everybody. I don't care. And, and even to the point where junior hunters and junior shooters, they, they've they renamed, remember the FID card? Well, we mm -hmm. still have it. It's now the long gun permit. But they've changed the rules on that so that anybody under 21 with a long gun permit cannot possess a semi-automatic rifle or shotgun unless they're at a club and under instruction. So a 1022 Ruger is now banned from anybody under 21. You know, a 20 gauge shotgun for hunting banned for anybody under 21. So it's just incredible how invasive uh, this is. It's it's just crazy. And what about the uh, the restrictions on applying? Uh, for a firearms license. I know that there is uh, now um, uh, what mandatory live fire training for anybody who wants to simply possess a firearm in their home. Yeah, we're we're actually still going through that part of the bill because this thing is so huge. And and that's one of the things that that I kind of want to parrot here, Cam, is that give us some time. This thing is so complex. There's only four of us here in the office. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I know there's thousands of eyes on this outside finding all kinds of stuff and that's great but we have to be very meticulous in what we put out there one of the things we're going to discuss today as a staff is you know there are some breadcrumbs in there they threw our way mm -hmm. why would we even talk about those anymore you know it's just to the point where the whole bill's so toxic that there's no reason to even get into that and normally we would do a very detailed line by line review of the bill. But in this case, I don't think the members would be able to understand it because we barely do. So, well, I mean, you know. yeah, listen, the initial report that you guys have up at uh, gold.org right now, uh, the, the resource page for the Lawful Citizens Imprisonment Act, HD 4420. Hmm. I mean, uh, honestly, what you all have been able to uncover already. Uh, is bad enough. But as you say, it is going to take some time to, you know, wade through some of these changes. But we're talking about this was something that you mentioned to me uh, uh, yesterday. Um, mandatory registration of all firearms and ammunition magazines as well, Jim. Feeding devices. Yeah. 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 We, we will have to, it, it, you know, th there's several things with that. Number one, how are we going to serialize our magazines? Right. You know, which... I'm, I'll tell you right up front in public. I'm not. So go pound sand. I don't care. You want to arrest me? Take care of me? Go ahead. Bring it on. Um, but I don't know how the state's going to do this. 
Because the way they have this set up, if you have a gun or a magazine that doesn't have a serial number, you have to apply to them for a serial number. They give it to you. You know how many magazines must be in the state of Massachusetts? Right. So how how are they going to possibly staff that? There's no way they're going to pay for that at the state level. So there's so many other things in this that require the state to do all kinds of things that the the amount of money it would take, even if they wanted to do this, would just be astronomical. And how are they going to enforce carry rules on private property? It you know it, this is this is one time when law enforcement in mass, which would be a rare thing, they need to seriously come out and oppose this and say no, we're not going to enforce this. We're just not. So I, I don't think that'll happen, but. You know, there's always hope. So there's a whole list of things that that we're already working on, Cam. We're already in touch with attorneys uh, because we know this thing's going to get railroaded through. So we have to be prepared to file an emergency injunction in federal court. We're already working on that. Um, You know, we'll probably have a rally at the state house in the next couple of weeks because the way this thing's moving, more than likely, it's going to be voted on by the end of July in the house. So, yeah, I mean, they're already holding a. I mean, they announced a hearing in the uh, House Judiciary Committee uh, when they introduced this bill, right? I mean, so they really are trying to rush this through. Well, it's already. It was bill was not filed by the committee, which was interesting. It was filed by the chairman individually. So, as what's called a late file, which means it wasn't filed in time for all the other legislation, uh, it had to go to House Rules to be approved. Now, normally. Uh, this is not still has a docket number. It's not an actual permanent bill number. Before rules even looks at it, it has to go through that process of receiving a real permanent number. It didn't. House rules has already approved it. It went to joint rules. They already approved it. And now it heads back to Judiciary Committee. So within just a few hours, this thing has already gone through two committee processes and is now in Judiciary Committee. We don't even know if they're going to hold a hearing on this. We don't. I mean, they're supposed to, but they can suspend the rules at any time they want. We know that. So, yeah. Uh, laws are for thee, not for me, right? So right. it's it's really incumbent on every gun owner to, to just get active. You know, even the gun owners that have sat back on their heels and say, well, it's not really that bad. Guess what? It just came to your door. It doesn't matter what you own. It doesn't matter what you do. You know, whether you're a hunter or a target shooter, or, you know, self-defense doesn't matter. This now attacks every single gun owner in the Commonwealth. It basically makes us all felons in waiting because you will not be able to comply with this. You won't. It's just a matter of what what law are you going to break? Right. As you're trying to exercise yep. your rights. Yep. You know, and, and this it comes, Jim, after uh, lawmakers held these, you know, the, the, these series of stops on their listening tour, right, where they were supposedly listening to gun owners. Yeah. You know, I, I think talked about this the last time you were on the show that uh, it, it really wasn't until you guys started making a stink that yeah. they started putting some, you know, pro-gun voices uh, yeah. up on stage and, and actually, yeah. you know, started yeah. giving the appearance of uh, of fairness and impartiality here. Um, but clearly they weren't listening to what gun owners had to say. They weren't listening to, you know, the voices who were saying, listen, you, no. you, you're aiming in the wrong direction. What are you going to do? You're trying to crack down on our rights. Yeah, they are trying to crack down uh, on the exercise of a fundamental civil right. I, I mean, yep. you know, I remember it was probably a year ago, maybe a little bit less. We were talking about the reaction to the uh, Bruin decision and the comparisons to, you know, massive resistance uh, by Southern states following Brown versus Board of Education, where you had yep. uh, not far from where I live. They shut down the public schools for five years rather than integrate, rather than, again, comply with this court order, recognize the uh, inherent rights of all citizens. It seems like once again, this is what we're going through in Massachusetts, not not based on, uh, you know, segregation, but trying to, in essence, segregate uh, gun owners and deprive them of this fundamental civil right. No other community, <clears throat> excuse me, community in Massachusetts faces this kind of open bigotry and oppression from its own government. Nobody it hasn't for hundred years. W- what makes them think this is okay? Because we know this isn't about crime. 
because we know the gun laws have not stopped crime. Crime's only gotten worse because Massachusetts continues to pass laws to weaken criminal enforcement, to treat criminals like little children instead of hardcore criminals. But and they incessantly come after us. Now, the one thing about the listening tour, which apparently they didn't listen to, everyone who attended, not just gun owners, even the mom said, we are not here about the lawful gun owners. They are not the problem. Well, if that's the case, then what's this? Because there's nothing in here about increasing crime fighting. It's 100% an assault on the Second Amendment, which pretty much is a tantrum because of Bruin. And that's all it is. And you can't call in anything else. I don't know, Cam, I don't know how the, how they would even hold a hearing on this because you're limited to usually two or three minutes in testimony. How are you going to cover this in two or three minutes? Right. I think the easiest thing to sit at the table and just say, you know what? No, bring it on. Go yeah. ahead. Try to enforce it. I dare you. <laughs> you know, you know, so... Because the first person who's arrested on it this stuff, you, you know, it's it's kind of funny, Cam, because years ago when I was a new lobbyist and I met freshman legislators, kind of to break the ice, I would say, you know, if gun owners were the people you think we are, would it be a good idea to piss us off? Would we tolerate you? And boy, we're getting to that point, aren't we? So it's it's just sad that, the birthplace of, of freedom has literally become its graveyard. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, so what is your advice to, uh, to to Massachusetts gun owners right now? Obviously, if you're not a member of the Gun Owners Action League, uh, you need to join. As you say, this is you, you might have thought these threats weren't directed your way, but uh, that is clearly not the case. And uh, now is the time to get involved. But you talk about the fix being in. I mean, should should uh, gun owners be contacting their lawmakers, even though they should be all over their legislators? Yeah. This is a time, Cam, where you cannot win this fight sitting at home and arguing and complaining in front of a keyboard. No civil rights fight has ever been won that way in the history of this country. And nobody should be, you know, everybody should understand that that's exactly what this is. This is a civil rights fight of our generation, period, in Massachusetts. And you need to get out. You need to get active. If you sit home and just complain on a chat room, you're going to get what's coming to you. So, you know, follow what we're what we're asking you to do. Keep updated. You know, probably going to have some sort of rally at the state house, And there should be 100,000 of us there that day. Um, you know, I know everybody's busy, but... You know what? When the Minutemen had to run to Concord, it wasn't, oh, you know what? I got to take care of the horse or I got to do that. No, th this is this is an historical event in the United States, and it has to be treated as such by the community. So, you know, all I can do is ask. All we can do is lead. And we'll go from there. Well, Jim Wallace, again, man, I appreciate your time today. I know we're going to be talking uh, very much in the future, not only about this uh, legislation, but uh, uh, hopefully about the litigation uh, to follow if this bill becomes law or if and when I should say this yep. uh, bill becomes law. Uh, but uh, you're absolutely right. And please keep us up to date on uh, on any rally uh, there at the state house, because we will certainly let our audience know. And it's uh, it's it's a little bit difficult for me to travel these days, but that is one rally I would love to be at. I mean, I was born in the state of Massachusetts. I, I'm I'm sad that I I don't want to live there because of the laws, no. you know. Um, but it, it is sad to see what is happening to my home state, uh, and uh, and I, I'm more than happy to give you any and all coverage that we can here at Bearing Arms. Well, you know what's interesting, Cam, is that the anti Bruin states are the ones losing the biggest populations. Yeah, people are fleeing them. You know that that should tell them something, but. They don't recognize that. So. No, they're too wedded anyway. to their anti-gun ideology. Yeah. And uh, I don't know what it's going to take for them to wake up. But uh, in the meantime, you know, these infringements are going to continue until uh, we put a stop to it, either the uh, legislature and the legal system. Uh, you know, best way to do that is to vote them out. But in Massachusetts, I know that is a, a tough road to haul because, again, yep. th this ideology is so inherent right now in the uh, Democratic Party. And they've got such a lock on uh, state politics. 
Um, but Jim, again, thank you for everything you're doing. Uh, let us know any updates that you guys are pouring over the, uh, the text of this bill. If you find any additional poison pills that uh, you need to let us know about, you've always got an open invitation. You know that. Yeah, I think the poison pill bag is going to look like a bowl of M and M's when we're done. So, <laughs> you know, not much we can. But anyway, all right, Cam, sounds good. We'll let you know. All right, thanks, Jim Wallace. Well, I do appreciate Jim joining us on the program. We are going to be having him back again before long, talking about the latest out of the Second Amendment battleground state of Massachusetts. Uh, before we get to today's armed citizen story, our good deed of the day, and our citizen and our uh, armed citizen report, when you make choices about where to put your hard-earned dollars. You know you're supporting not only the company that made the product, but the values and the principles of that organization, too, right? It's easier to flip a switch against a company when they blatantly conflict with your values. Uh, Just look at what's going on with Bud Light. But do you make an effort to do business with the companies that support what you believe when you can? Do yourself a favor and give Defender Ammunition a shot. These guys are veteran-owned and operated. Every person on their staff is military-connected. They are huge supporters of the military community, backing causes that are actually making a difference in the lives of those that have served. In fact, all of the profits from Defender Ammunition's logoed gear goes directly to the charities that they back. This company is one to support. Their ammo, top-notch. Customer service is fantastic. One of the shipping department actually writes handwritten thank you notes to their customers. Give Defender Ammunition a try. And I promise, once you do, you won't be going anywhere else. Check them out at DefenderAmmunition.com. All right, now let's turn our attention again to our uh, armed citizen story, our good deed of the day, and our recidivist report. We'll start there with a uh, story out of Dallas, Texas. A man on probation, 13 arrests over the past 10 years, accused of robbing three stores in Dallas. This guy actually, uh, the sort of the poster child for a new initiative that the uh, Biden administration, DOJ and ATF, are uh, conducting uh, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. It's called, the, uh, it's called Operation Take Aim. Uh, according to Fox 4 News, it looks to focus on violent repeat offenders, which is a good thing, considering that the ATF has been uh, focusing a lot of its time and attention on, you know, lawful gun owners. So uh, yeah, it's nice to see occasionally... DOJ and ATF can, uh, again, focus on those who are actually responsible for violent crime as opposed to those who are exercising their Second Amendment rights. Uh, And in this case, they are highlighting uh, one Javier Dominique Suttles. He's 26 years of age. Again, 13 arrests, at least since 2014. And most recently, the uh, local U.S. Attorney's Office says, was placed on deferred adjudication and probation for robbery and aggravated robbery, despite, again, that lengthy criminal history, a slap on the wrist in the criminal justice system. So U.S. Attorney's Office taking uh, cases now to federal court when it comes to Mr. Settles. Uh, the U.S. Attorney uh, Leah Simonton said he was given these chances, but he didn't take advantage of them. Instead, the federal complaint in this case details that Mr. Settles allegedly went on to commit three armed robberies over the course of just five days in late May. Accused of robbing a Brahms dairy store as well as a Metro PCS store. Simonson says each time he brandished a handgun with an extended magazine and menaced the store's employees. In one instance, the government says he threatened to kill an employee. In another, he warned that he would shoot up the entire store. Simonson said, quote, in one particularly awful incident, Mr. Suttles, apparently frustrated that there wasn't more cash on the premises, allegedly ordered the employee into the bathroom and forced the employee to strip naked. Luckily, that person was able to escape safely from the situation before being seriously hurt. After receiving probation and deferred adjudication for uh, previous robbery sentences, Suttles now facing up to 27 years in federal prison if he is convicted of these charges. And again, I'm not going to complain about the DOJ or ATF conducting this operation. I think they need to be doing more of this. But unfortunately, there are a lot of folks on the left who don't like things like Operation Take Aim or Operation Cease Fire that focus on repeat violent offenders, offer them the opportunity at times to uh, turn their life around, but again, refer their cases to federal prison or federal court if they don't take advantage of those opportunities. Uh, In Richmond, Virginia, for example, uh, the mayor and uh, Democrats of the state capitol have objected for years to programs like this because of the incarceratory nature For some defendants who, again, refuse to take the help that is offered to them, refuse to take advantage of these sweetheart plea deals to turn their life around. Again, there are a lot of folks on the left who would prefer to just keep giving them these slaps on the wrist rather than ever 
provide serious consequences for serious crimes. Today's Armed Citizen story from uh, the Lone Star State as well, where uh, Amarillo police say a homeowner shot and killed an intruder on uh, last Thursday morning, I guess it was. Don't have a lot of information, especially considering, again, this case is now a couple of days old. Uh, but uh, according to KVII TV, around 530 last Thursday morning, police responded to a residential burglary. When officers arrived, they found 53-year-old Cedric Milligan, who had been shot and killed. The woman who shot him said Milligan broke into her home. According to authorities, he forced his way inside through the back door, which was locked. That's when the female homeowner grabbed a gun and shot the intruder. The Amarillo Police Department Homicide Unit is investigating. At this point, it sounds like a a clear-cut case of self-defense, but there are some unknown questions here. Uh, Did Milligan know this resident, uh, or was this a random encounter uh, with an armed homeowner? Uh, again, was there some sort of previous relationship? Did uh, you know what were the details? What were the circumstances of this uh, break-in? Uh, hopefully, we'll get some of those answers in the uh, days to come. But again, right now, it looks like uh, this woman uh, will not be facing charges for protecting herself from an intruder in her own home in Amarillo, Texas. A uh, scary situation that the national media is just going to completely ignore. By the way, uh, finally today, our good deed of the day. In the right place, at the right time, willing and able to do the right thing. A uh, port here in Michigan man who saved a seven-year-old boy who had fallen into the river there uh, and was in danger of drowning. This was Sunday evening. CBS News in Detroit uh, spoke with the uh, uh, alert citizen who sprang into action. His name's uh, Corey Dye, 29 years of age. He says the uh, kid was so close, he said he wouldn't have even known if he didn't look. Uh, Dye was doing some gardening outside Sunday afternoon, and uh, he said, I, I kind of heard something odd. I thought maybe a bird or something. And I kind of heard it again. It was a little quieter this time. So I come up on my dock, and I look out. I get over here, and I look out, and there's a young boy on his back looking up. Thankfully, that uh, seven-year-old uh, had the uh, knowledge, I guess, to float on his back to uh, try to stop himself from drowning, but uh, die. And his neighbors immediately sprang into action. They called 911. They were able to get the boy out of the water. Uh, that involved jumping into the St. Clair River and pulling him out. Um, child apparently had swallowed a great deal of water, was vomiting it up, but um, uh, thankfully, looks like he's going to be okay. Uh, EMS transported the uh, child to local hospital. It uh, looks like he's going to recover. Dai said uh, after EMS left with the child, that's really when it hit him, what he had done. He said uh, he just had a guardian angel watching over him. I'm just the physical body. Again, in the right place at the right time, willing and able to do the right thing. Corey Dai, there in uh, Port here in Michigan, we thank you for your very, very good deed, as well as, I guess, listening to that guardian angel. All right, that's going to do it for this edition of Aaron Arms Cam and Company. I want to thank you for being a part of the program. As always, I'm looking forward to being back with you tomorrow as well. And don't forget, you know, on Wednesdays, we do have our VIP Gold live chat with Hot Airs, Ed Morrissey, and myself. Happens 1.30, every, uh, 1.30 p.m. Eastern every Wednesday afternoon. It's a great opportunity to... Uh you know, talk about some of the big Second Amendment stories of the day. Hope you'll be a part of it. If you're not yet a VIP or VIP Gold member, well, there's an easy way to rectify that. Just go to bearingarms.com slash subscribe. Use the promo code GUNRIGHTS, and you can get a significant savings on your VIP or VIP Gold membership. As our way of saying thanks for showing your support, we're going to give you exclusive content you won't find anywhere else. New stories, opinion, analysis that matters, because your support matters. And again, we thank you very, very much for supporting the independent pro segment of journalism. We do at Bearing Arms. Enjoy the rest of your 2A Tuesday. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Until then, be well, be safe, and be free.